What, what sums up what you do? Technology? Design? Technology. Recording. What are you? Technology? I'm money or finance. Alright. Okay. You ready? You're freaking me out. <laughs> What's this show called? <laughs> we don't have to give it a name right now. Okay. Let's get on with it. Alright. Okay. Alright. G'day everyone and welcome to our brand new show. Uh, my name is Peter and this is Julian and we are here in our inaugural vlog uh, to talk to you all things technology and finance. Uh, my background is technology, uh, I've been doing it for a, a long time and I get to uh, see a lot of the great tech that's out there and Julian tell them a bit about yourself. Well look I've been in the finance space for my whole career, 20 years, and played in the corporate space, but I'm really passionate about helping people with their financial literacy and education, and we're just gonna make this show super fun, packed full of value around everything finance and everything technology. So, um, what's going on in the world of technology, Peter? Well, Julian, there's always something going on in the world of technology. It moves so fast, as you know. Uh, one thing I think we should do first is actually tell our guests our, our viewers, how we actually met. Look, I'm actually, I know you don't want to have editing, but I'm noticing that when we look at each other, it, it sucks. Okay, all right. So, so I reckon we just... All right, let's keep you know, looking at and, the... And also the other thing I'm noticing, because we can just cut all this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing that I'm noticing is that, um, yeah, rather than, I reckon we just talk to, the, to, sure. to them. Yeah, yep. okay. So, yeah, Pete, um, Peter or Pete? Whatever you want. No, what do, you want? what do you I want? I don't, I don't care. It doesn't, doesn't bother me. I want to know. <laughs> Pete. Uh, Pete, the way Pete and I met was super weird. Um, I had a couple, I think two or three tickets to um, see Gary Vaynerchuk in Sydney and yeah, just thought my wife would come along with me and a mate and it just kind of didn't roll that way. So just selling them last minute. Um, Peter picked up the ticket from my wife and just randomly met him at the actual event and we just we hit it off like a house on fire so now here we are with our inaugural show and um, we're going to talk to you about finance and technology absolutely absolutely and just a little bit more to that story is that uh, I'm a massive Gary V fan for, for those who don't know who Gary V is Gary Vaynerchuk Google him uh, he's a, an American uh, entrepreneur, uh, fascinating guy, and he did a, a show in Sydney, and I found out about it quite late. I was desperate to go and see him because I'm such a fan, and uh, jumped on Gumtree to find, uh, try and find someone selling a ticket, and uh, I was fortunate enough that Julian was selling a ticket. I grabbed it, and uh, we actually then randomly met at the event, and um, yeah, and we we've just hit it off ever since and so there's a bit of a bit of background to uh, how we met and uh, so we got together uh, we've been having a few chats a few meetings over the last few months and we thought why not put our own show together and we'll talk about all things technology and finance so like I said this is our first show so we hope you guys like it uh, please give us some feedback uh, put it, put some comments down there uh, down below and let us know what you think and let us know what you want to what what you want us to cover and talk about, and then make we'll make sure that we keep it topical. So, what's the basis of the show? What 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 are we going to do and uh, with the show there, Julian? Yeah, well, look, I think we just need to talk about what's going on in the world of finance, and you know, clearly, uh, very topical at the moment is the Royal Commission and what's going on uh, with the banks. Is that still dragging on? Is it? I mean, that, that that's that was been in the news for. For a while now and, and you know all, all these banks seem to be getting dragged in front of the the courts and and, and well, the royal commission and so on and where is where is all that up to look i think um you know it was they were trying to avoid it for a long time uh, the politicians were trying to avoid it for a long time um eventually they succumbed and look i think for anyone who was in the industry there haven't been many surprises but uh it's certainly been a shock and awe we had rowena or one of the um working for the crown um, who got the nickname shock and awe um, and it has been shock and awe for the public but I think most people in the industry have been pretty much um, used to a, lo a lot of the shenanigans that have been going on and um, you know they're just having to to put up and, and, and get through this time 
But um, you know, certainly the the industry needs to go through a, a bit of a um, shake up, and hopefully it comes out. Uh, a lot stronger and a lot better for consumers at the end of it. Has it actually forced the banks to make changes? Like, are we seeing that now, or is it, is it, or is it too soon? Yeah, look, certainly lots of changes. I mean, my background's in the financial planning space, and you know, th that industry is going through massive change. Um, is it making it a better place for the consumer? Look, I think time will tell. At the moment, you know, the cost to deliver advice is extremely expensive. Um, the consumer is paying a lot of money to access advice. It's hard for the um, low end of the market to, to, to get quality advice. Uh, so we'll just have to see where it all it all ends up. But there's certainly massive changes happening um, while we speak, and I can see more changes yet to come. Yeah, no, there was some, some horror stories that came out of it, people losing their homes and, and so on. And, and it seemed to, to me, from an outsider's point of view, it seemed to be very much uh, commission-based, money-hungry people who were maybe signing people up that uh, they shouldn't have been signing up. Is, is that the way you saw it? Look, I think you know, you're always going to get your outliers. I mean, we had an article from um, Adele Ferguson uh, um, a few months ago saying, you know, it's not a bad apple, it's a bad apple orchard. Um, yeah. So, you know, it really depends what your perspective is. But look, what I think is that when you have a, a system that is set up to remunerate um, financial revenues and bonuses and outcomes, mm -hmm. you're going to get behavior that mirrors that. Sure. Um, when you're um, incentivized to sell a particular product or to sell products in general mm. um, under the guise of advice, there, there's inherent conflicts in the model. Mm. And uh, I, th I think we're going to see changes and we, we certainly have seen some of the big banks announce um, big changes in terms of how they remunerate their staff. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, these are big businesses with um, products to, to move and advice to provide. And, uh, you know, in, in the words of um, one of the one of the bankers on the stand, it's going to take um, it's going to be a big hit for the first player to, to make to make some of the changes mm -hmm. um, from a revenue perspective. So. Look, I, as I said earlier, I think there's a lot still to play out. A lot of people will leave the industry. A lot of people won't 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 be able to um, manage the the professionalism that, that will have to um, flow through to the to the participants. Right. But look, at the end of the day, I think consumers will win, and I think they're winning just by being aware because sure. the insiders are already aware. Yeah, well, oh, that's great. Well, uh, that's what we need more of. We, we um, you know, I think the for, once again from an outsider's point of view, uh, the, the banks have kind of had control over, over the market for some time and uh, I, I think now maybe the, the consumer is getting some of that control back which is, which is a great thing. Absolutely. Now tell me, you know, a lot of, a lot of my um, friends and um, you know, people I hang out with and you know, or I think everyone even, even the older generation, they're just looking at this technology and thinking the world is moving so fast. Yeah. We've got VR, AI. You know, who knows where it's going? I mean, we were chatting before, and Google started talking to us That's in your right, room. Yeah. So <laughs> tell, tell me, what's going on in the world of AI, and what do you see as the big changes coming through? Yeah, no, look, it's funny. Um, I actually just posted an a article on on LinkedIn today about um, about privacy and and how you know, asking the question to the to the greater community, uh, the LinkedIn community. Uh, is there such a thing as privacy any, anymore? We, we walk down the street, there's cameras everywhere. Uh, we go into our workplace, we've got cameras everywhere. Uh, public transport, there's cameras. And now, and, and I think, and also we've, we've learned to accept that. We, it's not such a big deal anymore. When, when those cameras first came into play, we were sort of like, oh, is it the right thing? And Big Brother's watching and so on. But now... Kind of like George Orwell, 19... 84. That's right. It just it just becomes, but it becomes part of life now. We just we just we just roll with it. We're mm. used to it, and um, you know, and we accept things. We sign up to things like you know, uh, Google, uh, giving consent to to organisations like Google to track us to to give us better information about traffic conditions and so on. I mean, it, th these are things that we use every single day. We are being watched. We're being followed, and now more than ever, we're being listened. To uh, as case in point, as as Google Home sort of jumped in before in our conversation, um, you know we have we have uh, Alexa from Amazon, you know we have um, Siri from Apple, we, Microsoft is releasing a product, we've got Google Home, we have these microphones, these devices who are listening to everything that we say, 
uh, to tr and to try and make our lives, I suppose, more convenient. You know, ask a question. Uh, just before, uh, when we were setting setting uh, our lighting up here, uh, you, you asked Siri uh, a, a question about lighting. I mean, it's just this learned behaviour that we're that we're that we're getting into. And now, devices such as watches have Alexa built into it, so I can suddenly talk to it and get a like get an answer get a response but it's listening all the time so whilst we have all this technology uh it, it is a little bit scary to think that you know nothing is private anymore there is no such thing as privacy uh, but you know th there's a trade-off um you have artificial learning and machine learning uh, we saw recently that there was a couple of university students over in the uk and they taught a car how to drive in 20 minutes. Yeah, I read that article oh, actually. It was fascinating. It is, and I think, you know, one of the things you said about we're giving up privacy to get, you know, convenience, it, it's kind of, um, people are adapting to it because it's happening over time. I mean, we didn't mm. just suddenly give up all our privacy. That's right. Yeah. Um, I was talking, actually I was reading an article not that long ago about um, all these data breaches and, you know, what's happening with the data and how we're giving up data just for these genetic tests now. You've got mm. companies that are looking at your genetic data yeah. and we're just so comfortable giving our information to, right. to corporations. But uh, look, I think we've acclimatised to it, we've adjusted to it, we're, we're pretty much got our lives on the table. Well, I mean, you know, bringing it back to finance, I mean, remember all those years ago when we started up with internet banking and, mm. and the banks encouraged us to, to get onto internet banking and there was all this scepticism around it and so on, like, oh, I'm not too sure if I should do, I don't know if I want to give my details over the internet. And now it's just such, it's just a part of our daily life, you know, logging on, transferring money. We don't even think twice about it. Everything's tracked, but mm. I, look, we're, I suppose we've become comfortable with it. So anything else that uh, you want to know about the financial world? Yeah, or? absolutely. I, I, I read an article today um, and talking about uh, the cost of living in Sydney and what it's like, what, what, what's classified as, as uh, being rich or in the top 10% um, in, in your in your city. Uh, I, I, what I read was uh, Sydney, I think you have to earn somewhere around $140,000. To be in the top 10%. Uh, yeah, to be yeah. in the top 10%. Um, it, I mean, what, what, do you, what are your comments on that? What do you think? Is that uh, because Sydney is just so expensive? Is that a realistic number for you know, people to earn? Yeah, look, top 10% is, is certainly only a few of the people in the population and you know, through some of the volunteer work that I do, I see people at the other end of the spectrum um, really struggling uh, just to put food on the table. There was a program on Insight uh, last night talking about just literally people struggling in Australia to put food on the table, food bank having to serve millions of people uh, every year now in Australia. The, the number was staggering. I was very much aware of food insecurity in Australia. I didn't realise the problem was so big. So often we look at our wages or our income and go, oh, you know, I'm earning 100 or I'm earning 200 and, you know, I don't know where it's going, but we've got to remember there's the whole other side of the fence where people are, are, are struggling. And, uh, you know, 135000 if you're earning it, seems like you can't make the money stretch, but people earning 200 grand feel the same. People earning a million dollars feel the same. And that's my experience offering advice for all these years. We tend to play to this um, principle where we always spend more than what we earn and we can never understand how the person earning more yeah. can't manage. So, look, I think it is a very expensive city. It's stressful, but uh, what, what what is what, what's causing it to be expensive? What what is it? Is it the housing, the cost of housing, or cost of living in general? Is there anything that you can see that um, would sort of pinpoint why Sydney well, we're is very expensive? Unique. I mean, Australia is very unique in that we have you know the population is is um, formed around you know four or five major cities, really two or three major cities to to to, to call it um, bluntly. And everyone wants to live in those cities and they want to live as close to the to the centre as possible and that just drives the price up. We're bordered by you know the mountains at one end and, and, and national parks at either other end in Sydney and the ocean on the other side. So it is a basin that's contained. Um, there is a limited supply and people just want to push as close to the middle as they can. I don't see a big fall in housing prices like some doomsday say. Yeah, it kind of slows down a little bit but it's always going to be a li in limited supply just based on the geographics of it. Um, so I think, you know, going forward, it's always going to be a tough city to live in financially and you're seeing a lot of people move out to, to have easier lifestyles. Yeah, we see, uh, obviously, for many years, a lot of people have been moving from Sydney up to Queensland. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, there's, there's 
probably many benefits at cheaper housing uh, it's a, probably a warmer climate up there as well um, and, and so on but uh, it, I, what I find fascinating is that you've got a city like you've got Sydney which is sort of in the top 10 if not the top mm. seven most expensive cities in the world I mean it's up there with your New York your San Francisco your Hong Kong uh, Singapore London all those Absolutely. all those places it's um, it, it's really quite quite scary it, it, and the prices don't seem to be slowing down housing prices and everything uh, just keep rising all the time they are and even in those outer areas like you know Parramatta Campbelltown and you are kind of getting those centers now like you know Liverpool becoming a mm. you know quite a center um, so yeah, yeah. Pa Parramatta I mean oh gosh I drove past Parramatta the other day and it's just changing completely mm. so yeah the world is changing so fast I think we were chatting about how quick the world's changing you yeah. know if you, you pop my grandfather in this room who died you know 50 years ago he wouldn't know what what's going yeah. on what do you think are some of the big technology changes that have really improved our lives that have made it easier to do business easy to have relationships what do you think of that some of those key technology things that are driving better better lifestyles well look I think um, communication and, and things like the internet I mean that if you have a look at uh, what has changed over the years for us once the internet came in it really changed how we did things like we we're just talking about internet banking and so mm. on and and you know um, instead of going to the library you just jump online and you, you can google something you can and and what happens with with that form of communication uh, it, it actually I think benefits education all right because you can actually be more informed these days uh, at, at a lot quicker pace instead of like I said going to the library and looking something up suddenly I could you know talk to talk to Google or, or uh, you know do a search on, on something and I can get that information instantaneously so um, so, so, as, so you think the, the main thing is that instant access to information correct. that's right yeah and, and that's what I'm saying so so the, the the internet speeds and so on I know that you know people are complaining about the speed of the NBN and so on and I for one am disappointed that it hasn't been rolled out uh, in the original form that it was meant to and, and to, to get the speeds that we really deserve in this country. However, they are getting better all the time. You know, technology is getting better. That information, everything's becoming quicker. We, mm -hmm. we have you know, greater access to, to that information. So. We're in an amazing world and this is going to be an amazing show. We're going to pack it full of what you guys want. So Absolutely. as Pete said in the beginning, give us your comments, give us the feedback. We just want this to be cutting edge on finance and also tech. So let us know what you think we should call the show as well. Yes, We'd love to right. we, 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 we need to come up with a name. So uh, help us out. Uh, give us a few suggestions and uh, um, hopefully we get something catchy uh, that uh, everyone can relate to. And we'll see you next week. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Cool. Should we watch it? Yeah. I reckon that was pretty good.